And now let's go to one of the fastest growing sports in the U.S., kickboxing. Hi everybody, I'm Steven Quadros, I'm the Fight Professor, and I am the commentator for Glory, and you're watching The Crystal Heart Show. We're here at Evolution Muay Thai, a couple of days before the big Glory 9 kickboxing card with the Fight Professor, Steven Quadros, and welcome back to the Big Apple, brother. Eddie, it's good to see you, it's good to see you in your homeland here, man, I'm loving this. There you go, you got here right directly by the subway, one fare, how about that? How yeah, right, I, I, I'm losing money every day on this rent, though. No, just kidding. <laughs> now, tell us about this show. This has been called, we talked about this before, the biggest kickboxing event planned in the United States. And a lot of people agree with it. It's not just something that our promoter says. Tyrone Spong, Daniel Gita, light heavyweight tournament, uh, you know, some of the top, top stars in the world. Well, what we have at the core of Glory 9 NYC, New York City, is an eight-man light heavyweight tournament. And that's 95 kilos around the world, but in the United States, that's 209 pounds. We have the number one ranked through the number four ranked light heavyweights on the planet in Daniel Ilunga, Philippe Verlinden, Murad uh, Buzidi, and then, of course, Michael Dute. And then we've got a number of other competitors, including the man you just mentioned, Tyrone Spong, coming down from heavyweight into the light heavyweight division, looking to spoil the whole night for everybody. And, but they don't, the light heavyweights are saying, you're coming to our division? Hell no, we're going to take care of business. This tournament is going to be one you don't want to miss. And this is a sport, because you can strike from so many different angles, is one that has a lot of knockouts, a lot of action, and unlike boxing, you don't see people who are veterans who have, you know, build up padded or undefeated records. And if Tyrone Spong is the favorite, he's going to win. He's going to have to beat three very tough opponents in the same night. Yeah, he really does. And his opening opponent, Michael Duke, is no slouch. Michael Duke could spoil the party. Michael Duke feels if he can take Tyrone Spong late, then he's got a real good shot at taking care of business. Got to watch out for that dangerous right hand of Spong early, though. But yeah, I think the only thing padded in this tournament is the gloves. This is true, and this is what people want to see. And, you know, you can do the one-night tournament. People have always loved the one-night tournaments in MMA, but yeah. it became unmanageable. You can do it in this because of the format, and essentially the maximum anybody's going to go is going to be nine three-minute rounds. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely true, Eddie, because the thing is with the tournament format, most of these fighters that are competing have experienced tournaments already. Now, people would say, oh, well, a guy's going to get injured. Yes, there is that possibility. For, but for some magical reason, maybe it's a, a guardian angel, so to speak, over glory. We haven't had people where we had to go to the reserve matches because there are two reserve fights that will happen early in the night. And the reserve fighter, should one of the uh, competitors that wins the fight not be able to continue, a reserve guy will come in. Now, there's a lot of buzz for this card. There's a lot of media people here. There's, you know, there are MMA people, Muay Thai, martial arts, kickboxing people, even some boxing people. There are a lot of different types of people. What do you see as the future of kickboxing in the United States and also in New York, given that Glory seems to have a stable organization and TV deals all around the world? Well, as you know, Eddie, I mean, I'm, I'm a long time. Uh, lover of MMA. I love mixed martial arts. But I also love kickboxing. I also love boxing. I also love grappling and jiu-jitsu. I, I love it all. So I'm going to say something that sounds cheerful and brutally optimistic. I think Glory is going to spearhead a resurgence of a sport that has been around the world uh, very, very much in potence, but the, in the United States have gone into a little bit of, uh, you know, shall we say, it went to sleep for a while. But now it's coming back with Glory, and I think the, the future is very bright for kickboxing. Yeah, well, there was the politics, and no, you know, you didn't know what happened over the years. Nobody knew who was a champion, and it was like boxing. We have a million champ, a million world champions, means that nobody's world champion. And it just seems that Glory's giving the opportunity for the best to fight the best, and, and hopefully that will continue to expand. Well, the champion right now at heavyweight is Sammy Schultz of heavyweight, and I mean that should a boxer fight Sammy Schultz or anybody fights Sammy Schultz course in a, in a glory rule fight then he's going to win that fight so glory has shrunken everything down into a nice package and basically all the top fighters have gone to glory and now it is the premier kickboxing league and semi shield 
You don't know who he is and you haven't seen him fight. A lot of his fights are online and YouTube and all of that. This guy, he's a, a outside of the ring, he's a, he's a gentleman, he's very quiet, soft-spoken, all that. Inside the ring, he's one of the few people to hold legitimate world championships, both in kickboxing. He's won the, you know how many times he won the K-1 Grand Prix, when that was the premier event. He was a King of Pancras champion right, in, right, right, in the right. 90s, which is kind of, you know, very close to MMA and those rules. And he's one of the, the best all-around athletes. And I don't know that he gets his due in the United States, but it, it, it's some kind of Hall of Fame, legitimate Hall of Fame set up for combat sports. So he should be, you know, when he retires, I think it should only be for retired fighters. He's Eddie, fighters. Something, something that just occurred to me, and you're, you're very familiar with, with this person, and, and argue with me if you like. I put Sammy Schultz in the same light as Alexander Karelin. Explain who he is. Well, Alexander Karelin, three-time Olympic gold medalist in Greco-Roman wrestling at heavyweight. He won whatever it was, 12 or 13 golds between Olympic, and he was under uh, Olympic and World Championships, was undefeated for many years till his final match where he lost one to nothing in the 2000 Olympics to Rulon Gardner. Was, it was an absolute legend in the sport of wrestling. But that's what he did, other than like a work, you know, pro wrestling yeah, yeah. fight that he yeah. did, didn't really But his count. legacy is pretty much, I mean, he's one of the greatest of all time, you have to say that. I yes. mean, and Semi Schultz to me is in that same league because Semi Schultz won four Grand Prix tournaments outside of glory, then won the Glory Grand Slam 16 man, meaning you got to win four fights in one night just on New Year's Eve. He's at the top of his game right now. I would love to see him fight in New York because, because you know, he's, he's, is he 40 or close to 40? I, I mean, think he's, he's about 37, 38. He, he's a veteran and, you know, Time is not on the side of, of athletes, so he's still at his peak. Yes, let's let's get him here in New York City, and I think he'll really wow a lot of people. And, and he, you know, he could be one of these uh, breakout stars. I think Tyrone Spong, if he wins, of course, Saturday United has potential, but I think Sammy Schilt is another guy. Yeah, I, I completely agree, and I, I want you, Eddie Goldman, the man, the myth behind NHB News, to start the movement. Sammy Schultz, all six foot 11, 290 pounds of him, come here to defend his title, maybe against Gokan Saku, who's now number, number two, who wants a rematch with him anyway. Planting the seeds, Eddie. That would be good. Tell you, you know, you know the, the big bosses at Glory a little bit better than I do. I think that would be great if they could come to New York. I think the New York fans would, would really love it, and a lot of people would, you know, a lot more people would pay attention to it. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. All right, Saturday night, June 22nd, Hammerstein Ballroom, 34th Street between 8th and 9th Avenue. Very easy to get to. All the transportation goes there if you know New York City. Take public transportation, by the way, if you're coming there. Do not drive into Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm absolutely, I was thinking about surfing my way there, but I figured, you know, oh, no, that's California. No, just kidding. Man. Yeah, this is not California. <laughs> This is the Big Apple. Yeah, I take, know. The, take public transportation at all. The subways, the buses, Long Island Railroad, the Amtrak. It's right near the Port Authority, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They all go right there and you just sort of fall out of them and you're right at the house. Yeah. Eddie, listen, thanks a lot for interviewing me, man. It's always good to see you, brother. Good to see you, and uh, we'll see you Saturday night.